Hey guys, there's been a dramatic amount of changes made to the design plan and I'm going to go ahead and share that with you guys now. I also have some pretty profound statements that I made in my initial announcement video that I have to renege on and I'll update you on all those changes. So let's go ahead and get started with the uh, the system design. I had initially said it was going to resemble the UVI system and it would be made primarily out of concrete. Well, the concrete portion of that still holds true. Uh, this system will be nothing like UVI's at all. In fact, there will be no DWC uh, incorporated into this system as of now at all. We'll be using uh, the grow towers that I had showed you on a previous video. Uh, it's green in color. The new ones will be gray in color, but the point is those grow, grow towers will uh, be my growing area. So I'm going to start with 50 of those and my tomatoes and peppers and things like that. All my fruiting crops will be grown hydroponically and not aquaponically in uh, Dutch bucket systems. So we'll see, we're going to start with about 200 Dutch buckets. So you'll get to see a large uh, series of Dutch buckets run in sequence hydroponically and then aquaponically we'll be powering all of our towers. So I'll just do a quick run through on the design as soon as I can remember how to use SketchUp. Guys, I'm not a pro in SketchUp, so you can laugh at me, but even trying to give me pointers isn't going to help. Alright, so starting from uh, with the fish house. Obviously, there's no roof in this drawing. Both of these areas, uh, the, the fish house here on the left will be covered with a, with a, a roof as well as the greenhouse area on the right. That's what you're looking at. So, each of these tanks are represent 3,500 liters of water. So it'll be 21,000 liters of fish tank water. We'll have six tanks. And that water is going to flow from the fish tanks into the series of four 500 liter, uh, what we'll call solids filter tanks. So it'll be just radio, a series of radio flow filters in which the water will enter the first. And the reason these are run in sequence is to increase retention time. Instead of using one giant filter, I've used a series of filters uh, just to get the retention time that we need to settle out those solids. These tanks don't represent it in the drawing, but they are pre-made 500 liter conical based uh, solids filter tanks. And we'll run them uh, probably in a, a radio flow or, or swirl filter uh, within each one. From there, the water is going to travel into a... Um, a biofilter, which will also serve as a fine solids, serve as a fine solids filter, and then back into the sump. So one of the big things that you're already seeing that's somewhat unique to this system is that the water for the fish and the water for the plants is completely segregated. It is not entirely recirculating. So that being said, the fish water will be fed to the plants, and the water from the plants will never be reintroduced to the fish unless I manually choose to do so. All right, from the sump tank, obviously the the water is pumped back into the fish tanks, and then you know so continues our our, our circle of water. This other stuff here is just sort of uh, cosmetic designs in terms of you know this is represents a table and maybe a sink and some some storage shelves here on the bottom. Uh, it's, it's all rather pointless. Uh, that's not what we're looking at. We're getting on to the green, going over to the greenhouse area, and then I'll talk a little bit about what's going on here. The greenhouse area is nothing more than a sloped piece of concrete. It doesn't need to be thick concrete. I think we're going to start with 10 centimeters and uh, put a natural slope into this thing so the water can drain uh, back into the sump area. The size of this area, which will be covered with a polycarbonate roofing will be 10 meters wide and 30 meters in length. So 300 square meters of growing area. Significantly smaller, if I recall, than what I had told you initially when we were on the UVI's um, train of thought, when we were going to do lots of DWC and long beds and things like that. Here's why I didn't do it, guys. The area that I have to cover to utilize DWC is extremely expensive for me to cover it. I have to cover it here in Thailand. We get uh, heavy torrential rainfalls, which will decimate your crops. Um, you'll have a lot of additional water being put into your system that you can't really control. And so I had to 
go with a smaller footprint and by growing vertically I'm not sacrificing all of my ability in terms of number of holes that I have to grow and I can get a smaller area which I can afford to adequately provide a roof for and manipulate the environment a little bit with shade netting and things like that. Um, the polycarbonate roof will be exactly that. It'll be more or less an A-frame with a vent somewhere in the top on both sides or we'll have one vent in the center sort of like a uh, uh, what do we call those? The saw sawtooth greenhouses and uh, we'll, we'll put in shade netting to keep the temperature, the direct sunlight down, ultimately the temperatures down and uh, so there won't be, it won't be a polytunnel, it won't be a traditional greenhouse. The, the temperature concerns here is never about keeping things warm, it's always about trying to cool things down. So uh, mitigating the rainfall, keeping things cool uh, is what we're concerned with. Now I initially was considering maybe I could do some evaporative cooling, um, some different, I looked at some different options. Uh, I can always add that stuff later if I view it viable or if it's necessary. But I think we'll have good luck with just shading, um, you know, like a 30% shade on the entire structure. Uh, we can move that shade net around as we need to. And uh, that's going to be the initial plan. When this thing is done, we'll be heading into the cooler po portion of the year anyways. So I'll certainly be able to get away with a few months of good growth. And then we can reevaluate in the next uh, quarter, we'll call it quarter, in the next, you know, three months, whether or not we need to incorporate additional cooling methods. All right. Now, let's talk a little bit about the, first of all, this tank represents a sump tank, as does this one. This one is nothing more than a water in, water out, um, will pump from and drain and drain back to this sump tank. It's just going to be a hydroponic solution. Everybody knows how to control their hydroponic nutrients, etc. Uh, we just daily monitorings of EC and adjust as necessary. Uh, top up for fresh water, no big deal. The aquaponics portion of it is represented by this tank on the bottom here. And there's a lot more going on in this specific area than what you're seeing here. Um, the reason for that being, as I initially said, I was not going to use any proprietary information. I have to go back on what I've said because I am using a piece of proprietary information. Um, the good thing is, is I will tell you guys where you can go to get this information. If you're doing a larger system, I would highly recommend that you contact Aquaponics Asia and hear what they have to say. I think it'll be time well spent. Um, you'll find them a very approachable group of people, nice folks, no bullshit, cut straight to the, uh, you know, your questions and answers. And um, it's just essentially a method by where you're mineraliz mineraliz mineralizing inline, uh, inline mineralization of your fish solids uh, through different, uh, you know, bacterial sequences to ultimately achieve the maximum output from your fish waste. That's the whole idea here. Um, the beauty of a system like this in, in separating the fish and the plants is I can run if I want to, three different pH levels. I can run different pH in my hydroponics, I can run different pH in my aquaponics, and of course I can keep my fish at a different pH. Um, different water temperatures, different uh, supplementations as necessary. If I'm dosing my aquaponic plants with iron, potassium, calcium, what have you, I'm not dosing 21,000 liters of fish with iron. I'm dosing only the water that is being fed to my plants. So in the end, it's about control. It's about minimizing your zones to a point where you can adequately control them to give the best for each individual you know, organism, whether that's a plant or a fish. The point is we're giving them what they need to maximize our progress. That's the idea anyways. I will put Aquaponics Asia's information in the description of the video. Feel free to reach out to them. Go check out their Facebook. The point is, um, while I said I wasn't going to use any proprietary information, we have to understand and respect that there is a great deal of thought, time, and money that goes into good ideas. And just because it wasn't my good idea doesn't mean that I can sit here and say, well, I'm not going to do that because even though I recognize the value of this information, um, there's no way that I can, in good judgment, disregard the information and so I would encourage you to at least do your research and hear what they've got to say 
and it may prove that it could be very valuable to you. If you're of the mindset that you want to take another path, sure, there's a many ways to, to, to do it, and that's fine. Um, this is just the one that I've opted to go with, and while I did go back on my word, I've got to respect the uh, value of the information as not being my own, and that's why I cannot share it freely with you. Okay, so that's pretty much it, guys. Um, there was a problem with the builder. There was a delay, and you know, 30 to 40 days maximum is what I was told I'd have to wait before we could start the project has turned into now 59 days. And so I have uh, sourced a new builder and we'll be starting as early as this weekend or, or very early next week. So we'll do all the concrete in, in one go. We'll pour everything and then the rest of it is just going to be the steel framing for the polycarbonate roof, the steel framing for the fish house roof, and uh, lots and lots of Dutch bucket assembly. Um, the towers, the fish tanks, all of those are pre-ordered. They are on the way as well. So I think once the concrete is poured, um, then I'll be putting together all the buckets and all the towers, and uh, we should be well on our way to getting some water into the system once everything is plumbed up. So I can't see this thing in a perfect world taking much more than two months to, co to complete, but things don't always go as planned. If we finished in three months, uh, that's fine. I'd really like to get the fish turned on um, as soon as possible to begin building up my bio load to ultimately feed the plants. The hydroponic stuff I can turn on the first day. Now the reason why I've decided to grow my fruiting crops hydroponically is because I'm not confident enough in my abilities to grow them aquaponically. Yes, people do it. Yes, it can be done. But at the end of the day, here at home in my small 3,000 liter system, I was supplementing so much so many different things in terms of potassium, iron, you know, calcium, phosphorus, um, testing my waters and seeing where I was falling short. And uh, granted, I'm over planting for the number of the fish that I have. I, I tax the system uh, very heavily. But I don't feel like troubleshooting and fiddle fucking around trying to do something that I'm clearly not competent enough to do when I can just simply grow them hydroponically and not have to worry about suffering in terms of yields and, and output. Uh, additionally, I do enjoy, enjoy growing hydroponically. Uh, it's a lot of fun and I don't think there's anything wrong with taking part in both uh, methods of soilless culture, being aquaponics and hydroponics. All right, that's all I've got for now, guys. Um, tomorrow, I'm supposed to have my the new soil that was placed on the land, which I had already showed you. It needs to be compacted. So tomorrow, we'll get a roller out there, compact that down, prepare it for concrete. And I would anticipate, if not this weekend, early next week, um, lots of framing and concrete uh, being poured, as I've already said. So that's all what I have for you for now. And uh, hopefully, by the end of next week or within you know uh, 10 days, I'll have a new video showing you the progress of where we're headed. So thanks for tuning in, and I'll see you soon.